Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we've got a great one. This is going to be a multi-part, multi-hour course where I show you how to launch an internet-based business using Shopify. Now, why Shopify? Well, I went to Twitter and I asked, you know, what platform should I use for selling and creating a course showing you how to sell stuff uh, tangible physical goods on the internet and the, the, the massive majority of you basically said Shopify. So this course is going to assume that you've never used Shopify and you probably don't know much about graphic design. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to show you the whole process basically. Um, and what I'm going to be doing for this particular business, it's not a fake business. Um, I've been getting into reptiles lately, as you can see back there, there's also a Burmese Python over there. And basically I'm going to launch a internet based business where I sell, uh, basically terrarium based uh, accessories like, uh, driftwood. Um, sanitized driftwood that I found. So that's what I'll be starting with. And so I'm going to show you how to take product images. I'm going to show you how to pick a theme. I'm going to show you logo design uh, for, for your branding and uh, identity design. I'm going to show you how to adjust it, pick out a theme and how to adjust it, make adjustments with HTML and CSS. Um, I'm going to show you marketing even like, you know, how do you drive traffic? How do you make sales? So this is going to be a robust course. Um, and so this is just the very first part today and it's about an hour long. Um, and I'm going to be showing you how to pick a domain name, how to register it, um, how to create your Shopify account, how to tie your domain name, your, your .com or whatever you choose to that Shopify account, how to design the logo. I'll show you my, my process for designing this logo, how to get the logo onto a template and also the theme. Uh, I'll show you how and where you can find themes. Um, and so there's a lot covered today, but there's going to be a lot much more down the future. All right. So also, if you want to follow along and you want to launch your own Shopify store, by the way, this is not a sponsored video. Um, they didn't come to me asking me for this. Um, but if you do want to support me and you are going to have a Shopify account and you haven't created it yet, click on my affiliate link in the bottom. Um, I'm not approved yet, I, but hopefully I will by the time of posting this. But basically, I'll get a little bit of money for every time you sign up. It doesn't cost extra if you use my affiliate link. It costs the same, but it's just a way for you to help me out. All right. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's go ahead and get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, as a front-end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get Get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so there's a bunch of websites that you can use um, to find domains. Now, I've personally always used instantdomainsearch.com. Don't worry, they're not sponsoring this video. It's just a, a cool site that's been around for a long time where you can just start typing and it's going to show you all the available or unavailable um, domain extensions based on what you're typing. So when it comes to choosing a domain name, obviously it's it's going to be based on your company name or it should be at least. So uh, if, you're, if you're, your company name is Google, then you should try to aim for a google.com or google.net or any of the other extensions that you will see. Um, so for me, for this this business of uh, selling decor and stuff for terrariums and aquariums, I decided to try to just do a few initial initial searches based on um, using a common name uh, that combines like terrarium and aquarium. They both end in the same five or so letters, um, which would be, so if we have terrarium, obviously that's not gonna be available. Um, uh, we could say A R I U M. So those five last letters, A R I U M, that's not available, of course. But then I decided, okay, maybe I can put something 
at the beginning to make my own unique word. So, um, exterium. That's kind of cool. So it's not aqua like aquarium. It's not terrarium. Uh, it's exterium. I think that's kind of cool. And we can see that all these domain extensions, these are available because they're just denoted in by, uh, green buys. I mean, it means it's it's ready to go. Um, and you can see all the domain extensions. So .com, .us, .app, .blog, .co, uh, which is short for company, dev, .io. So these are all domain extensions that you can choose to use. And you can also, um, register multiple of them for the same name if you wish. You don't have to though. And you're probably wondering, should I use a .com or should I do use a .us or should I use .app or whatever? It all depends on your needs. Um, and for pretty much the most part, uh, you can't go wrong uh, in terms of search engine optimization. Some people worry about, you know, uh, if you use maybe a certain type of domain like .design, is that gonna hurt you with your ability to get traffic from Google? And the answer is no. I uh, pretty much no um, for about all the cases. Uh, so you don't have to really worry about that. So if you have an app and the .com's not available, then just use .app. Uh, and so I'd say ideally, stick with the .com if you can. You don't have to, but if you can, most people understand .com. It's the most used, it's the most well-known extension. So. That's the name that I'm choosing, exterium.com. Um, and I just have all my um, domains, most of them at least, hosted over at godaddy.com. So once you know what you want, you just type it in, exterium. And we can see it's available. And we'll hit add to cart. So this process is pretty much very similar across all the other domain registrars. There's other ones obviously outside of GoDaddy. I'm just cho choosing to use it, but I'm just gonna walk you through some of my options here. So um, full domain privacy and protection. So if somebody wants to do a who is search, um, let me just do that real quick for you. Who is .sc, I'm gonna do GarySimon.com. Uh, you could put anybody's domain here in this who is search and it's gonna tell you information about that person. Um, we can see registrant is redacted for privacy. So I do have privacy on there. If you didn't, it could show your name and also it could potentially show like other information that you may not want other people to know. Um, so if we go back, you know, you're gonna pay $9.99 uh, per year. Now some of the registrars may even act like, add this for free maybe the first year so you can just sh ship around for me personally i'm just going to hit no thanks just to keep my cost low it's not a big deal for me everybody already knows who i am and where i live anyways so um start your website for free design a better website in less than an hour i'm not going to do that uh, because i know i'm going to be using shopify they're going to be um, part of this the, the the basis of the website already so i don't need that Create an email address that matches your domain. For now, I'm just gonna hit no thanks. I'm not exactly sure how that works out in terms of uh, um, with Shopify and all that. So I'm just gonna hit no thanks. You can always add that um, later on if you wish. And I'm gonna hit continue to cart. And then I'm just gonna choose one year. Oh, uh, let's see here, yeah. And it's only 11.99, so it's 12 bucks per year that you're gonna pay for um, your domain basically. So at that point you just hit check out and then it's gonna ask to enter your uh, credit card information and login and all that. So I'll do that here off screen. All right, and so I paid for it as we can see. Um, thank you for your order. Ta with taxes it was $12.17. Um, and there we go. So at this point, um, you can do this launch a free web page, one page. I'm not gonna do that at all. Um, I we're gonna come back to GoDaddy um, after we create the Shopify account. Um, and that way we'll be able to connect Exterium with our Shopify store. All right, so here we are at the shopify.com site. So what we wanna do now is, um, you may wanna check out the, the, the pricing here. So set up your store, pick a plan later. This may change depending on when you're watching this video. Um, right now, basic Shopify, um, is 29 bucks a month. So 
you know, hopefully you're pretty serious about your project at this point. Of course, there is a, a free trial as well. So I've never even signed up for Shopify before. We're just gonna do this on the fly. So I'm gonna enter a contact at coursetro.com. I'm gonna put in a password and then my store name, Exterium. There we go. So there we go. Let's log in. Sit tight, we're creating your store. You know, this is this type of little uh, animations are, <laughs> the store is already created. They just kind of do that for the user experience just to make you think that there's a lot of bells and whistles happening behind the scenes. All right, so what does this say? So tell us a bit about yourself. Are you already selling? Um, I, I'm just gonna choose not to sell that. What is your current revenue? Uh, which industry will you be operating in? I. Uh, well, I'm not exactly sure what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna put here yet. Maybe I'll just put uh, handcrafts, kind of. Maybe furniture, furniture for uh, reptiles. There you go, uh, for a client. No, I'm not. All right, so answer those based on you know what you're creating your store from. All right, in the previous screen, I just skipped because there's just, I was just entering my personal details like my address and stuff. I don't wanna be giving you stalkers, um, you know, any way of contacting me like that. So your trial just started. Okay, so um, you're, let's, let's choose like, okay, is, obviously there's a call to action here, select a plan. Um, I, I assume that's gonna be something like where we choose this, but we don't necessarily have to choose it right now. Uh, for your, for when your tree file end or tree, your your tree file really your free trial ends. All right, so there's no risk. Uh, you can cancel before July 16th, and we won't charge you. So we're going to come back to that when we need to. Um, so now let's let's take a look at just uh, some of the interface here to get familiar. Obviously, we have no orders um, products. This is going to be where you're able to add a product. So in my case. If we come up with a, a piece of driftwood or whatever, uh, and it's all ready to go, we can add a product here. And this is gonna be very simple. Um, I'm gonna put in just like a fake title here, just to experiment. So um, large driftwood, I don't know. I'll come up with a better title than that. Um, descriptions here, you know, we can just put, I uh, let's see here, blah, 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 you know. Okay, media. So this is where we're gonna want to add our graphics or our various um, like professionally shot, not professionally as in like paying somebody to take the photos, but um, doing it as best as we can to really present an awesome uh, photograph. So that you know, because that's really what's gonna help sell your products uh, is is great photographs and and really staging them correct. And we'll get up. To that you know we'll get to that point later on um, but I don't have anything there for media pricing so it's gonna be based on you know the price of the individual piece um, so we'll just say 49 here compare at price to show a reduced price move the original price into compare yeah we won't mess with that um, SKU okay so you can you can enter all this stuff we're not gonna enter this now uh, quantity available would be one. This is a physical product. Um, we'll just put three pounds. Country of origin, United States. All right, so there's a lot of uh, options here, as you can see, but let's just hit save. And we'll have our very first uh, product all set up. So I. Uh, now, if we click on continue setting up your store, let's take, take a look at what exactly that does. All right, um, customize a theme. So we've added a product. All right, so add a domain. We definitely wanna get there. Um, customize theme. Let's check this out and see what this page gives us exactly. Online store is password protected. All right, current theme, all right. So when somebody goes to our site here in the future at exterium.com, they're going to see this theme that's here right now. Um, I would really like to be able to see this theme when I'm actually, you know, while we're actually using it. So view your store. 
So as you can see up here in this address bar, I know it's kind of tiny looking, exterium.myshopify.com. So they give you a what's called a subdomain name. All right, so the subdomain name is based on the, the name you gave it on the store and dot myshopify.com. You don't want to use that. Uh, you want people to be able to go to your domain, all right? So this is not very professional if this is the actual subdomain you, you give people to. You will always, always be able to give people this URL if you wish because it's always going to work, but you don't want that. You want them. You want something that's easy to remember and your, your exterium.com is going to be much easier than say exterium.myshopify.com. So don't ever do that, okay? Um, this is what the site looks like right now. Of course, there is a lot of just filler because we haven't yet added anything. And there's probably multiple themes and all this stuff that we can you know, choose to customize and we're gonna take a look at that in the future. But right now what we wanna do is kinda hook up our domain name, right? So let's go back and click add domain and we wanna add domain here. All right, so this is the one that's currently connected, like I said, and that's a subdomain, but we want to add a domain uh, and right here. So if you already have an existing domain, which we do, we choose this option. Otherwise, you can buy it from within this interface over here. So connect existing domain. So I'm gonna type in exterium.com. Ugh, I can't type. It's late, it's like almost 12 right now at night. All right, connect your GoDaddy domain. Now look at that. All right, so let's just do connect automatically. All right, let's give this a shot. It's probably gonna show all my other domains. Let's hit connect. All right. Now look at that, this is really cool. So basically my Shopify or Shopify is um, integrated with GoDaddy. Um, and they are making all the necessary changes in order to take that domain and point it to our store. All right, so that's cool. Um, so it's successfully uh, connected. Your, your domain is now pointing to your online store. It could take up to 24 hours for the change to propagate. But in my experience, whenever I register a new domain name, and I, it, it usually goes within minutes for me personally. So we'll check that out. So like for instance, if I go to Exterium, Dot com. This is probably still up. Oh, no, it's the Shopify site. So take take a look at that. So powered by Shopify. So it's already there. Very very cool. So um, this page right here, it's not showing this because it's not live yet. So that's why you need to enter using a password. So eventually, when we want to get this to a point where somebody, when they go to exterium.com then we definitely want this sh to show up, of course, with all of our custom imagery and all that stuff. All right, very, very cool. All right, so what we have here, I'm um, using an application called Adobe Illustrator, um, one of the most popular, if not the most popular, uh, tool for designing vector graphics, and that includes your logo designs. Um, so I'm gonna assume that you know those of you watching this perhaps have never designed a logo ever. And with that, I'm gonna describe just some basic concepts you need to understand when it comes to having a logo for your business. So first is you want your logo to be vector, all right? So there's two different types of graphics when it comes to computer graphics, and that is vector graphics and then raster graphics. Um, a photograph is a rastered graphic. Uh, it deals in pixels. A vector graphic, uh, it deals in mathematical f formulations in order to arrive at the shapes. So what that means is for a vector graphic, you can scale it to any size imaginable without ever losing quality or without it ever getting blurry due to pixelation. Now with a raster-based graphic, uh, if you try to scale it up real large, like to get on a billboard and it's a logo, um, in, unless you have it at that site or that size originally, it's gonna look crappy, blurry, pixelated. It was just, it's just not going to look good. So when it comes to print and when it comes to your logo design, you wanna make sure it's 
vector and this is a vector drawing application there's a lot of other ones there's free ones out there um, so just understand that you want a vector I uh, you know graphic of your logo and it's important to tell that to whoever you know if you end up having someone else design it it's important to tell them that as well that you want a vector you know a, del a deliverable or a file of your your, uh, your logo next point I want to make is if you've never designed a logo before maybe you shouldn't tackle this if this is an important business for you it's probably worth just hiring somebody to design a logo rather than trying to take on the task yourself unless a you have zero dollars and B you're pretty talented in terms of graphic design um, in, in understanding what makes an effective logo all right so there's some really cheap ways to go about it still so if you if you're really bootstrapped with cash cash I you know you can you can go to fiverr.com I guess I don't really recommend that they're really cheap sometimes you get crappy results and sometimes people just you know uh, they'll steal um, other designs and give you that and then you're running into an issue there so um, let's just go ahead and assume though that maybe you do want to try to design your own logo and that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to make that assumption. So what makes an effective logo? All right. So these are two logos I created. Um, by the way, before I go any further, I did create a, a, I think it's well over three hours, a three hour long logo design identity design crash course on my YouTube channel. So I'll try to remember to link that here. If not, you just go to my YouTube channel in the search and just type in, type in logo design or identity design and you'll find it. It's, more, it's my most watched video. I think it's at a million views already. And it's gonna give you a really, really thorough rundown of what, you know, of how to design logos, what makes logos effective. But just as a quick uh, a way to answer that question, what makes an effective logo? You want it to be, of course, like I just said, has to be vector. Um, you want it to be something that is more simple rather than complex, all right? People are simple. They have simple minds for the most part, part, and they also have short memories. You want something that people will remember rather than forget, and people forget what's complex, if that makes sense. So if you can make something that's bold, unique, and relevant, and maybe witty, uh, then you're going to have a great, a much better job with your branding and people remembering your brand if you could do that as opposed to uh, having a real complex logo with just a bunch of objects in it. So you want simplicity as much as possible. Um, so in these examples here, what I did was I just took a font, um, my favorite font, which is Montserrat up here. And I just typed out the word of my business. Now, of course, you don't have to go all caps. You can go like this. You can go. It's completely up to you and the kind of feel that you want. I like the bold, serious sort of uh, aesthetic that all the, all the caps lock gave the name. So that's what I started off with first, is just having the name. And then what I do is I kind of just look in the line. So just a little bit of terminology for you. This is called a word mark, all right? So the word mark is just the, 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 the actual type of the business name. Sometimes you'll see other logos that have like a, a symbol next to it, in which case that's referred to as a combination logo where you have the symbol plus the word mark. Um, and Sometimes you simply have just a the word mark. Some, you don't need an external symbol. So a lot of times I'll look at the, the letter forms and I'll ask myself, okay, what is this business about? What letters and what shapes of the letters do I have to work with so that I can work in some sort of unique abstract element within the type? So another thing I wanna talk about real quick about what makes a, a good logo good I uh, is the concept of uh, abstract versus literal so let's say for instance you know this is a reptile business would it make sense for me or a reptile like kind of a decor business would it make sense for me to have a log up here just like a literal log like maybe it's in vector format or whatever um, or would it make sense to 
perhaps try to hint at the idea of a log rather than making it literal. So the answer is you want it to be abstract. You don't want literal representations in your logo because there's nothing unique about it. If I just had a log there, okay, whatever. Yeah, it tells people what we do, but at the same time, that's not good branding because it's not unique. So for this business, we could see I have two examples that I created here. The first is I've taken uh, a look at this R. So this the right side of the R had this this you know kind of nice sort of semicircle right here. And so what I did is I I took I uh, pen tool, my tools over here, and I extended this R to kind of uh, create a snake form. All right, or you know if I put legs on it, it could be like you know some type of lizard or whatever. Um, and you could still see, you could still read it. It still says R. Um, but it also has a snake head. So that immediately, this is still a word mark logo because this is still just an extension of this letter. Um, you could still, it, it, it's pretty good. Uh, you could see that I, it's relevant. It's not 100%, I, I guess you could say, literal because it's not like a whole snake that's just sitting there. It's worked into the type and it's pretty effective and it's simple. Um, over here, I took a lowercase e and I kind of just modified the e in such a way that you see this shape right here. This right here is just a very abstract representation of a snake or maybe the body of a lizard of some sort. And I just worked it into here. So these are two potential options that I could use. Now I wanted to show another option um, just to show you the whole process of designing a logo. So you may find that when you're trying to come up with your logo that you, you, you have a bunch of ideas and that's how professional logo designers work. Actually, I was a professional logo designer at one point in time in my life where I designed over 2,000 logos. So I'm, I'm definitely not new to this. Um, so we're gonna take Exterium right here and I'm gonna take a play off of this element right here, the, the swoosh. And we're gonna create an abstract E that will also serve as a combination, like as its own symbol. And so we'll have three of these little serpent things to form an E. That was an idea that I had that's randomly. So a lot of this is just sitting there thinking about potential concepts. You can do this on pen and paper. A lot of people do it with pencil. Um, it, it's completely up to you. There's no right or wrong way. So what I'm gonna do is take the pen tool, hold shift and create two uh, lines right here. So if I select this, we're gonna create uh, some thickness for the stroke. And then I'm gonna to go to effect, we're gonna to go to distort, and we're gonna to go to, let's see here, zigzag. This is a cool way to create smooth flowing lines. So what I could do is hit preview, and we want smooth. And we just have to adjust these parameters right here, ridge edges per segment. I think that's pretty good right there. Size. I'll adjust this a little bit. It looks a little weird because we have a fill as well, so you can see this right here. So we'll fix that up. We're gonna hit okay just for now. We'll scale this down. We're gonna get rid of that fill color here. So now we'll just have our shape right there. And also, I think I might taper it. So we could take this option right here and choose that. And we'll take this, Control C, Control F, Shift in, pull down. All right. So I'm just gonna get this lined up. All right, that looks pretty cool. Um, we could go back, let's uh, increase maybe the, the size of the boldness a little bit. And I think that's really cool. Now, of course, in terms of being an E, it's really abstract. I mean, I, I personally like it though, because um, this option up here, I see an S in there and that could be an issue. Um, people might see an S more so than an R. And so you have to think about that type of thing. How are other people going to interpret it? You should always get feedback as much as possible. Um, this one right here, it's not too bad. It would probably, my choice would probably be between this one and this one. 
and not that one. I personally, I really just kind of like this option the most uh, because it could be its own symbol um, taking out of this and maybe in certain areas of the site or your branding, I might just use this. Um, so again though, it can be easily be construed as kind of like an abstract E. So I think that's really cool, I like that. Um, it almost looks like as well, if you look at the negatives or the white space of the side of this left side of the X, it's almost like an arrow going that way, which is kind of a play on the whole um, FedEx logo, which has that sort of same sort of, of arrow that you find embedded into the type. Um, so either way, I think it's really cool, and I think uh, we're gonna use this one as the basis of the logo. So when you have the logo and if you created it from scratch and you have your type right here, before you save it and export it as um, a vector file of some sort, you wanna make sure everything's converted to outlines. Right now, I can edit the type like that. When we're ready and we have you know, our, our, our type exactly as we want it and our logo exactly as we want it, also our strokes, we want to outline those as well because right now we can still edit the stroke uh, shape. We can edit the stroke size. We don't want that. What we want to do, what I would do is take this first, probably just save this whole entire document. So I'm going to say all logos. And then we're going to take this. I'll create a new document. So I copied it and I'm going to paste it here. This is going to be our final logo, okay? So what we'll do is I'm gonna take the artboard tool here, hold Alt, kind of scale it down in there. Hold Alt, scale that that way. We'll move things over. Now I'm gonna hit Control Shift O, letter O and that will take any of the type elements and convert them to outlines. So now, if I go to my uh, direct selection tool, we can see we can edit the anchor points and all that stuff, but we can no longer edit the actual type and add new letters in. Uh, we'll take these as well. I'm gonna go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. So now those are also converted to paths. You can see the anchor points here. We can't no longer make it thicker, really, in the traditional sense at least. And we may want to adjust the letter spacing. See, there's a, the X and T are touching here, but this one's kind of far out. These are a manual things that you can adjust. Uh, so I'm going to take this. These are grouped up automatically. See, they have their, their own group. But I can right-click and ungroup those. So now I can just take these, kind of maybe move them over or move this one out, and then just try to create a nice flow uh, between each of the letter forms. So depending on the font that you use, you may have to make these adjustments uh, a little bit more so than I did. But I'm pretty happy with how it looks here. So exterior, there we go. So now make sure we save this. And you can see we have the um, native file extension AI for Adobe Illustrator. We'll save it as that. We'll say final logo. We'll just say it's black. All right, we're gonna hit OK here. And then when you upload this for use on a website, uh, you can add, you can save it as an SVG, which is scale, Scalable Vector Graphics. And that's my preferred uh, file extension to save this type of thing in because it is SVG and it does work on websites and apps and all that. Um, so there is the logo process. So you remember how we settled on this logo right here. Now, I basically a few hours has elapsed since I chose this. I showed some people um, the three different options actually, and I somebody said that this right here, this symbolism, reminded them of water, like ocean waves, and that made a lot of sense once somebody brought that up to me. And I don't want any type of brand confusion because we're not just targeting aquariums, right? And so that's a really important point to remember. No matter what you're selling, you don't want to confuse people right off the bat. So I went back to square one and tried to figure out any other thing that I could come up with. So I stuck with the concept of modifying an E somehow, and I came up with this down here. So 
I'm actually really pleased with this one because A, it's working within this proportionality. Um, I didn't like the other one over here because it kind of makes the logo a little bit taller than it needs to be, which means like if we put it on the nav bar on the top of the website, it's gonna make it a little bit by more height, which I don't like. Um, it's easy to read the E. Um, we can clearly see it's a snake of some sort. And watch this. If I take this, replicate it, let's get rid of some of these other letters. Oops, let me right click and ungroup. If we turn this up, what is it that we see here? It's a snake going into a home, which is freaking perfect. It's kind of like a hidden message, I uh, but really that's the whole purpose of the business. It's I uh, it's is to create uh, a business where we're providing decor or decorations for habitats for fish or, or reptiles of some sort. Uh, and so I just think that looks freaking awesome and it, and it works perfect. So I'm really happy with that, with how that turned out. So this right here is going to be the actual final logo. All right, so we need a theme now. Um, now that we have a logo at least, uh, but I do wanna have a, a theme that we're gonna choose. So um, right here uh, under our themes, we can see we have different uh, actions where we can preview and um, edit the code and all that. Um, I don't want to use this particular theme, the default one that they start you off with. So you have two, uh, you have three options really. You can choose some free themes right now. There, I think they have nine of them that you can choose. Oops, we don't want to do that. Let me go back again. I was trying to open up in a new tab that doesn't work. Um, so if I click on Explore uh, Free Themes, these are the free ones that you have access to. Um, some of these could perfectly be fine for whatever your needs are. Um, so go with that if you wish. Um, I'm going to do a different option. Now you can also visit the Shopify theme store. Now this theme store, these are pretty pricey. I mean, most of them are around $160, uh, $180 as you can see. There's a lot more um, options to choose from in terms of themes and they're you know grouped up by category and all that stuff. You can customize all of these to you know to your heart's content, really. Um, but I want to show you another option. If we go back here, we can see you can actually upload a theme as well. So how does that work? Well, there's uh, third-party theme creators, and at ThemeForce.net, which is pretty much the largest marketplace for themes for WordPress and Shopify and all that. Uh, we can actually download, uh, purchase and download themes uh, right from this site and then upload them. Um, and there are a lot of them. So like if we type in Shopify theme, we're gonna have a ton of options uh, from which to choose. And you can see the prices are a little bit better, like $89 for this one, $39, $69, uh, Porto, we can see a 79 and what you're looking for, really, uh, you don't necessarily have to find a theme that shows your exact industry. Um, so I didn't go here and start looking here for reptile <laughs> themes. It doesn't really matter because you can always customize the imagery. What I'm really looking for is making sure that it's responsive, which I'll get to in a second, um, and it's designed well. And it will work for the number of initial products that I plan to, to launch, which, which it's not going to be that many anyhow. Um, so interestingly enough, there's a theme that caught my eye and it's called Gecko 4.0. Now, Gecko is an actual lizard. It's, a, it's very interesting, um, but this isn't why I chose it. So you find one, you can click on live preview and see what it's actually going to look like. So I'm gonna remove this frame here. And this is what the theme will look like. You can imagine the um, logo right here for Exterium. Uh, you can have your navigation right here. Um, I really like the design of this. Uh, so we have our headline here. Um, right here is gonna be a customizable image in this section, which I thought what would look really cool is perhaps like a large piece of driftwood that's cut out with a, with like a transparent background. Um, and there's just a, a lot of, and it also comes with uh, 
20 plus demo home pages. So what that means is um, you can choose to populate the database with like these demo home pages uh, with fake content that you can later customize for your needs. And as you can see, there's a lot of possibilities. They almost look like completely different websites even though it's a part of the same theme. So I'm going to choose this one. I haven't even bought it yet. I haven't installed it or used it. Um, but I'm fairly certain I can get it to work um, and we'll be able to customize it to our liking. So I'm just going to buy this at 69 bucks. You know, when you're starting a business, you know, when it comes to purchasing items, sometimes it's a necessity. In this case, it's not really because I could have used one of the free themes. Uh, but I really like the look of this. It's pretty well designed responsively. So if like, what I mean by responsive is I will it work well on the smallest of smartphones and also the largest of desktops. All right, that's really important, uh, especially in this day and age when there's so many devices to choose from. So if I, I come down here, this is kind of what it'll look like on a smartphone or we hit Control Shift I here in Chrome. We click this little icon. We can see what it looks like on certain devices here, like a Galaxy S5. This is what it looks like. An iPhone X. You can see what it looks like on an iPad Pro. Very, very cool. So I like it. Um, I'm going to go with this one. So I'm just going to buy this. Regular 12 month support, yada, yada. Uh, let's do six months. Keep it at 69. I'm going to add this to my cart, go to checkout, and sign in. Usually this auto fills in my stuff. All right, so I uh, just purchased it. I'm going to go ahead and download this. And it's going to show up down here. It's not that big of a file, two and a half megs. Um, show in folder. That showed up on my other monitor. So what I'm going to do now is going to go, I'm going to go back here to our area. I'm going to choose upload theme. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and choose this, or I can just probably drag it off the screen into here. Can I? No, it's not allowing me to do that. Oh, well. And I'm just going to go here and upload the file. Uh, that's not good. Upload a zip from your Shopify theme. Maybe, oh, I got it. Here's what happened. Let's open up that zip file. We need to extract this first. All right, I'm glad I actually um, did that. So, or showed that rather, because I know a lot of people that may have tripped people up. What we need to do is upload this actual zip file. It's a zip file inside of a zip file, if that makes sense. Now it said, uh, extract this first. So what we want to do is, I'm using um, an evaluation copy of WinRAR. Um, what I can do is extract to, and I'm going to go over to my uh, area where I store, is it this one? And where are we at, where are we at? What's it called? Exterior, there we go, sorry. I'm being slow. We're going to extract that folder first. All right. And then I'm going to go back to my folders here off screen for a second. There we are. And we could see we have our gecko main here. We want to upload this one. So let's redo that. So I will copy that URL and we're going to upload this. This time it should work. All right, theme uploaded. So it's still working apparently. I'm not exactly sure what it's doing. It's probably creating files and doing all that stuff on the server side. And you can also see while this is working, uh, we have what's called um, demo data. So we don't have to worry about any of these files in here, but what that means is if we try to choose one of those 20, I think it's had 20 different like homepage demos that you can try out, um, it'll take that data from here. So remembering this will be important if we wanna try that out. 
So I'm not exactly sure what is taking so long. Let's click view our store. Okay, so it's not yet set to this. So let's I uh, let's click on actions. Okay, we can't do that. All right, so I guess it's going to be working for a little bit of time. I'll come back when it's finished. All right, so it just finished. It took about like a minute after stopping. And we can see it's not customized yet. Um, let's see here. How can we, let's do an actions. Preview, publish, download theme, edit code. Uh, let's preview this. Is it gonna be, it's probably not going to look correct. <laughs> no, no, obviously it doesn't look correct at all. All right, so the reason I knew it wasn't going to be correct is because based on our current, um, like uh, how the store is set up, we don't have much for it to choose from. So it's it's putting these fake graphics in, which just looks, it makes it look really bad by default, but that's okay. So what we need to do is to really start customizing thing. We could probably start with the logo. So let's go here to customize. All right, so start your business journey with Gecko. Use uh, Gecko Shopify and explore all the tools and services you need. Okay, so enter your purchase code. So check your email after purchasing um, your your theme. The, it may or may not require you to do this depending on which theme you purchase, but for me it is. So I'm gonna paste it at that, that code off screen just because I don't want my purchase code out there. And I'm gonna hit start Gecko, there we go. So here it is. This is what this actually looks like now. Very, 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 very ugly. Um, and so now it's our, our basically our, our goal is to go ahead and start to populate this so it looks decent and presentable. All right, so um, theme actions, import demo. So let's see what this says. So I, no, you can choose any version to apply it settings for your website or leave a default one. Um, May override all theme settings and really the okay. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and drop a file here or click upload. All right, so let's see what this demo data says. So like home case, classic cosmetic diet, uh, organic. I wish I could kind of see. Let's just try T. So that's, okay, now it's gonna show you what this looks like by default. I don't like that one. So I'm gonna hit cancel. We're gonna to try it again. I, uh, tools, yoga, what's organic? Yeah, I don't really like that one either. Let's uh, click on this again here. And we'll go to the live preview and we'll see which one we kind of want to use. This one looks pretty cool here. I'm just trying to imagine, you know, my driftwood <laughs> perhaps being worked in in different areas here. Uh, that is certainly a possibility. So what was this one? It's called Diet Store, okay. So that could definitely work. Um, taking a look at some of these other ones before I make a decision. Remember, I haven't done any of this um, beforehand. I'm, this is all a new process for me. This one could possibly work, which is gardening. This one's pretty cool here. Kind of like a black theme, but it, it seems like there's a lot of stuff all over the UI. I don't really like that that much. I think we're gonna do the, the um, what was it, diet store? So if I click diet store, maybe we'll be able to see. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, ooh, I don't wanna click that. Um, vegan food, so these are like categories. So these are, all, all these sections are pretty much customizable, I would imagine. Um, and we could probably, if we want our products all to be shown right up underneath this hero section, then we can do that. And I could probably also customize, and I'll show you how to use CSS and all that stuff to customize. If you need to make you know specific customizations that the visual editor won't allow you to, um, we can do that as well. For instance, <clears throat> this is 
pretty high, like a, a large hero section. Maybe I only want it to be like half the size of the height of the the the, um, the browser. So we can make those adjustments as well. So I, I think we'll just stick with the diet one. So going back, um, where am I at? Here we are. Um, so going back, let's let's cancel that again. We're gonna choose the one that says, hopefully there's one that says diet, yep. All right, so now let's go ahead and click import. It's going, it's going, it's going. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, um, it didn't import everything like the original image that it had. Things are looking a little bit strange with the um, navigation being so close to this headline. So we'll, we'll figure this out here. So if I, it's already saved. So um, theme actions, preview theme. Let's see what it looks like actually previewed. Yeah, this is this right here of course is a big mess. Um, horrible design, and that's because of all this crazy blue background. Um, it's hard to follow exactly what's happening. Let's figure out, see if we can at least get the logo that we created, get that up and running uh, as much as possible. So, uh, theme settings. So if we go to header, we have a logo, there it is. Okay, so select our logo, upload image. All right, so we're gonna go to exterior and choose our SVG file. What? Image SVG in XML is not a recognized format. Are you kidding me? All right, so let's figure this out. All right, so unfortunately after some research, you can't actually upload an SVG file here, which is absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. Um, there's a way to do it, but it's a little bit of a, an evolved process, so I don't really want to confuse too many people. So what we're going to do is just use a raster-based PNG file. Um, so to do that, if I just I type, if you're using uh, Illustrator as well, Control Shift Alt S will bring up Save for Web, um, and this is a PNG 24-bit, which is what we want. We want it to be transparent. We'll go ahead and save this and we will put this in uh, our exterior folder final logo black now we'll do this again this time it better work right here's the png there it is all right so now if i go back and we want to make sure there we go we'll select that and then select that there we go. So now, logo sticky. Let's see, there's a lot of areas. So the logo, um, use name SVG upload files. Example, logo. This is interesting. Maybe I have to name the SVG that. Okay, so apparently you put in the name of the SVG right here. I, okay, let me give this a shot. I was perhaps doing that wrong. Okay, so what you wanna do is based on the name of the file you upload, you wanna put it here. That way it'll find it. There's our awesome logo right there. Now, yes, it is rastered, but it is a larger, I saved it at like a larger um, dimensions than what's shown here, so you shouldn't get pixelation because it is just an eye, a logo there. So uh, very cool. So now um, you can change the dimensions of the width and height, um, a logo image for sticky. That means I would imagine if you, you have like a sticky nav bar perhaps and you start scrolling down, it will always show. Okay, so basically it gives you an option to change the logo when it's in sticky mode like this. Okay, very cool. All right, so now we at least have the uh, logo showing up now. So there's a lot of other options here. So um, header top settings. So um, left header top, share follow buttons. We can choose to uh, hide those. 
I'm just gonna put none. All right, I uh, share button type, blah, blah, blah. Header, uh, top text color. Background repeat. All right, so as you can see, depending on which uh, theme that you purchase, you're gonna have a lot of different, uh, L, um, basically a lot of different settings that you can choose to customize. So we could turn off the sticky behavior. Behavior. So if I turn this off and I scroll down, notice how it doesn't stick anymore. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. So it gives you all these options, which is really cool. And you just go over these, uh, you know, on your, your own time, essentially. So let's just save this. And theme actions, we'll go ahead and preview the theme. Where'd it go? Is it in another browser window? There it goes. All right, so there we go. So we can see our logo. It still looks really bad with this image. And that's gonna be the next step is coming up with a graphic right here um, that will work really well, which means I, I need to create and take some really good pictures uh, so that I can use something that would work pretty well here. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that first part. There's a lot to take in. Um, I know some of you probably like, oh man, I wish I could see part two. Maybe part two is not up by, by the time you're watching this, um, but you still have your hands full I, if you haven't already registered a domain, if you don't already have a logo, if you don't already have a theme. So those are things that you can work on. Sorry, people are texting me. Uh, and in the, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and in the next part, I'm going to just focus on getting that theme ready, getting the product images and getting your products added uh, and more. So as always, make sure, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.